Last week, uh, Mac Rumors published an article about the iPhone 14 Pro, uh, that it would be bringing thinner bezels than the current generation. Now, in that article's justification for the changing of bezel width on what is otherwise essentially the same form factor, I, Quinn Nelson, was cited as a source concerning the iPhone 13's bezels, that the current generation iPhone has slightly larger bezels than the iPhone 12. But here's the thing, uh, that's not true. <laughs> They're the same size. When I received the iPhone 13 Pro back in September, I noticed that the bezels were indeed larger than on my iPhone 12 mini. After a few responses along the lines of, that's just an optical illusion because your new phone has a darker bezel, I took to taking out a pair of digital calipers, I measured the bezels, and I determined that they were indeed different sizes. The new phones were larger. But it only took a couple of minutes before it was pointed out to me that, uh, yeah, hello, moron. <laughs> of course they're different sizes because they're completely different models of phone. That if I had compared the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro, I'd likely find them to be the same size. I was comparing the Mini to the Pro. I quickly recognized that this was a stupid error, and I replied to my original tweet with a correction and stated that while I didn't have an iPhone 12 Pro to test, it was certainly unchanged. Mea culpa, dumb tweet. Perhaps unwisely, I continued to make jokes with my Twitter followers about the iPhone 12 mini being the best phone ever made, and then I left the thread up for several months, when in reality I should have just deleted it. Having done so would have ensured that it didn't make its way into a, uh, sorry, poorly researched Mac Rumors article seven months later that didn't validate the tweet cited in the article with my follow-up tweet or better yet, something more conclusive and definitive like Apple's actual device drawings that they provide to the public. With that said, I'm not here to throw Mac rumors under the bus. I am the one that made the silly mistake seven months ago and there is no getting around that. I stated on Reddit that while I work really hard to make sure that my actual videos are Loctite accurate, my highly sarcastic tweeting has historically been well, pretty off the cuff and hot takey, which can and has led to incorrect conclusions in the past. Um, running a more careful Twitter was actually one of the goals that I had set for 2022 because I haven't changed my tweeting habits since probably 2014 when I had a significantly smaller viewer base. Um, I recognize, it's, it's weird to realize this, but I recognize that my words, be them true or false, uh, can and have carried a lot more weight than I anticipate or expect them to because my audience has grown so quickly in the last few years, even though I still feel like I'm making videos for a couple hundred people. Um, so I'm gonna do better, even if that means fewer sassy Twitter memes. What I would like to address, however, is a rather highly upvoted chain of comments on the Reddit thread about that Mac Rumors post. It reads, Quinn Nelson, drama queen <laughs> stirrer extraordinaire, followed by, you don't carry a micrometer around 24 hours a day to invent reasons to get on things? Ending with, I guess I would if I made a career out of it. Now these comments are found on the Apple subreddit, so many of you will likely encourage me to just quickly discount them as haters, but I can't. <laughs> Look, it'd be pretty easy for me to point to my last 10 videos about Apple products because eight of them were overwhelmingly positive. One was kind of lukewarm and only one was truly negative. That said, I would rather address this head on. Apple is killing it. If we rewind just five years ago, we find a grim product lineup, no pro desktop Mac at all, with people forcibly building Hackintoshes because the consumer iMac just isn't cutting it and the Mac Pro is pushing five years old with horrible single core performance and dismal graphics capabilities, not to mention reliability problems. And the powerful new MacBook Pros, well, those are thermal throttling almost instantly with very poor battery life. And they have a litany of keyboard issues with only a touch bar to show for the abandonment of Apple's iconic refined 2015 lineup. The iPad Pro says that it wants to be a desktop replacement, but that's a lie because it doesn't have anything to show for it. It doesn't even have a basic file management system yet. And the very outdated looking iPhones, well, they're getting long in the tooth compared to the rest of the Android market that has pushed towards bezel-less design. In 2017, my videos about Apple were largely negative because it was increasingly difficult to find anything positive about Apple's strategy. And my channel grew a lot during that time because I was the Apple fan doing what Apple hated, criticizing them for their decisions. And all the Apple haters loved that. 
Well, fast forward to 2022, okay? Apple doesn't even look like remotely the same company. <laughs> Their own chip designs are destroying the market. Nearly two decades of receipts add up to success. In 2008, they acquired PA Semi, which had helped Apple make some of the most power efficient SOCs in the world. In 2010, they bought Intrinsity, which was a company known for developing the world's fastest ARM core just a few years prior. In 2012, the acquisition of Anobit brought memory controller design in-house. And with the 2013 passive semi acquisition, it allowed for effective low power communication like we find today in the U1 chip. And most recently, the 2018 acquisition of Dialog Semi brought best in class power management engineers in house. And that doesn't even get me started on the numerous talent acquisitions that they've made from the likes of companies such as Imagination Technologies and Intel, Qualcomm, Nvidia, ARM, AMD, and more. The end result is, well, obviously Apple Silicon, which has redefined performance per watt. It tops single core performance charts everywhere and pushes way above its price and consumption on multi-core performance. It also has promising future graphics capabilities. We've got the new M1 Studio that is the enthusiast X-Mac machine that Apple fans like me have been wanting for over 20 years. And then we've got the Mac Mini. Despite the uninspired chassis, it yields one of the best price to performance ratios of any desktop PC on the market. And the new MacBook Pros, well, they are almost perfect. I can't believe I'm saying that about a laptop, but they have incredible battery life, remarkable performance without throttling, the return of ports that we've been missing, and the best laptop display on the market. We are editing our videos full time on a laptop. That's unbelievable. Oh, and about that display, LuxView was acquired by Apple in 2014 and has clearly been working for the last several years to develop low power mini and micro LED screens. There are only 34 monitors and notebooks with mini LED available right now. Just eight of them are laptops and none, not a single one, match the quantity of zones, the refresh rate or color reproduction that Apple is achieving. And oh yeah, Apple is selling those mini LED displays attached to laptops for less money than everyone else too. <laughs> <laughs> Apple is no longer pushing the iPad as a desktop replacement, but has brought more desktop focused features like trackpad input, proper file management, better multitasking and more. No tablet comes even close in experience. Oh, and you also get those beautiful mini LED displays there as well. And while it's easy to look at the iPhone and say, ah, well, the iPhone is boring. It's consistently every single year, one of the best overall phones with excellent battery life, class leading photo and video modes, and an increasingly tight integration into this Apple ecosystem that offers even better app support in recent years. Now, Apple's improvements, they haven't fallen on deaf ears, certainly not mine and not the markets. Mac sales have never been better. In 2019, Apple moved just 17.5 million Macs, which was a four year low point. Two years later, in 2021, with Apple Silicon options available, Apple moved 26 million units, the highest year for Mac sales ever in history. iPad sales have also hold strong and 2021 proved to be the iPhone's best year ever. This year, the iPhone, best year ever. 50% sales market share in the United States and growing fast. So again, Apple is killing it. Now that's not to say that they're doing everything right. I have complaints, big complaints about the way they handled privacy stuff with the CSAM debacle last year. And, and that's not canceled, that's being put on hold. That's concerning. I'm also very suspicious about their self repair options given the well latest SSD drama in the Mac studio and the fact that Apple has always sucked and been against right to repair. I think that the Apple TV hardware and other pieces of hardware in Apple's lineup are getting so outdated that it's almost offensive. And then there's certain software suites like HomeKit that are severely neglected. I think they can do better than the current MacBook Air. The silicon's cool, but everything else is old. There are many things to improve and I could go on for hours and hours, but listen to me, Apple is killing it. And the overwhelming majority of what they make is great. So when I provide feedback or criticism and suggestions in my Apple reviews, it's not because I want to invent things to <coughs> on or because I want to be a <coughs> stirrer, but it's because I want Apple's products to be even better than they are already. And I know they can do better because look at where we are now versus five years ago. Thank you so much for watching and stay snazzy. Also credit. <laughs>